All right, hey, what's going on, everybody? Mike Lindsley back with you. Phoenix Sports Restaurant is a location for this nine minutes with Mike Lindsley video, of course, on IGTV, YouTube, and Facebook. And uh, you got to come out to the Phoenix Sports Restaurant in central New York. You've got to come out and try all the great food. You've got to get their awesome beers on tap and the bottle and the can. We're going to be here November 3rd for a Syracuse Wake Forest college football and Breeders' Cup watch party. Tons of prizes, free cheese pizza for everybody. You got to make sure you get here. $2 can specials and all the rest. This video I want to focus in on Syracuse and Florida State uh, this Saturday uh, at the Carrier Dome. This is an interesting game, in my opinion, for a lot of reasons. Number one, it's early in the ACC calendar. Just the third week of the season, and Cuse has got a major ACC opponent right there on the schedule. Conferences are doing this more and more now where... You know, the earlier to better, the better to have uh, a conference matchup. In fact, Florida State, this is their second ACC game already in just the third week of the season. The other reason it's interesting is I always look at it with noon games. I always look at noon games in college football and in college basketball. How is the body going to react when you wake up, when you get going, when things start to take form? What kind of shape are you feeling in? Or is your body more uh, inclined to, uh, you know, getting ready for the day, doing a walkthrough, having a breakfast, getting some rest, and then maybe tipping off at 4 o'clock or kept kicking off at, <clears throat> at 7 o'clock? I've always wondered how the noon uh, situation uh, affects both college football and college basketball. And the other thing is, you know, to me, it's, it's the Florida State factor. I mean, I, I just don't think this team – is very good. I mean, during the Virginia Tech game, uh, first game of the year, I had uh, sent out a tweet and uh, got some uh, pushback and, and, and some overreactionary responses from folks, including my man David Schultz, who's doing a great job hosting radio and covering the LSU Tigers down south. Um, but this is a team that doesn't have the same playmakers. Nyqu playmakers. Nyquan Murray doesn't exactly – uh, remind you of Peter Warwick, you know. Naquan Murray doesn't remind you uh, of, of of some of the other awesome Florida State, Lavernius Cole, some of the other awesome Florida State receivers of the past. I love Cam Akers at running back, and I love you know I love what um, you know he, he's able to do uh, in terms of controlling the game. But this is not the same Florida State team from a speed standpoint, from a size standpoint, from an athleticism standpoint, and this is also a road game for them. And I think their quarterback is really, really erratic. I mean, I think you can get to DeAndre Francois in a heartbeat. I think if you can kind of rattle him a little bit, uh, you really can get him to turn the football over. You might see James Blackman uh, into this game. You might see him <coughs> start here pretty soon for Florida State as well. But this team is just not the same old Florida State. And the final thing on the Knowles, of course, is this is the first year for Willie Taggart. Remember, this guy came over from Oregon. Uh, he's been in and around a, a lot of programs in college football. Now he's taken over a team in Florida State where, hey, the recruits who stayed, they stayed, I get it, but they're still not his guys. And it's going to take a little while for these guys to buy into Willie Taggart. Uh, systematically, approach, practices, um, personality, it's not as simple as people think in terms of when you have a head coach and, and you know, Jimbo Fisher was unbelievable there. I mean, he was a great recruiter. Jimbo Fisher won a national championship. Jimbo Fisher went up ahead, you know, head-to-head -head with Clemson. Uh, you know, you think about the players he brought in there. You think about the players who ended up leaving for the National Football League. Jimbo Fisher was the perfect fit for Florida State University. And now you bring in Willie Taggart, who's kind of got a completely different style uh, to how he coaches and to how he approaches the game. So it's going to be a fascinating thing with Florida State the rest of this year. As far as the Syracuse side of things goes, <clears throat> I'll tell you what, I mean, I like the matchup. I really do because I think the offense, <clears throat> excuse me, is going to have a wonderful opportunity to move the football. Now, yeah, I know what you're thinking. Oh, geez, come on, dumbass. I mean, the defense might not be able to stop anybody. I realize that, but I'm specifically looking at the matchup between the Syracuse offense and the secondary of Florida State and the fact that Florida State's defensive line really isn't as great as they used to be. Again, this is a different team, different speed, different mentality, different athleticism, different playmaking. <clears throat> it's not as good across the board. And that Florida State secondary can really be chopped apart. I mean, if you watch the game against Virginia Tech, you watch the game against Sanford, Syracuse moves fast. Syracuse has a lot of offensive weapons. I think a couple of key players for the Orange this Saturday 
I think Mo Neal is going to be one of them. I mean, catching the ball out of the backfield, running the football. I wouldn't mind to see Syracuse try to establish a little bit of a ground game. Obviously, Eric Dungy is always the key when he plays well and he stays healthy. This team has a chance to win any game on the schedule, in my opinion. And then, in addition to that, you got to look at the wide receiver position against that secondary. They have got to have, at some point before the end of the year, uh, I preferably by the midway point of the year is what I should have said, um, they've got to have Jamal Custis or, or, or Devin Butler or or uh, Ravion Pierce, the tight end. They have got to figure out uh, who's going to take that next step in the wide receiver core. And it's very fascinating, too, when Dino Babers and the offense starts to roll and there's a lot of guys who are targeted early, they might make two or three catches and then they'll disappear for the next few days, a few downs. Um, I've been talking about this for days with, with other people. I just got out of a lunch meeting actually with a friend of mine who's a big SU fan. And uh, we were talking about that, you know, the consistent targets for guys when they're, when they're on, when there's matchups that are created. I think I'm going to go with Syracuse this Saturday. I will not be surprised if they lose. I won't be surprised if it's a blowout, you know, Florida state coming in and doing that as well. Um, but I just like this matchup. I like a lot of things about it. Week three, Florida State not as good. Still trying to buy into Willie Taggart. Uh, Syracuse's offense rolling here a little bit. Syracuse doesn't have a huge opponent the week after, so they're not looking past anything. Um, you know, in terms of, well, we have down Florida State this week and we got Clemson next week. So, you know, you don't have any of that going on. Um, I just like this matchup a lot. And I know last year was last year. Um, and I never am the guy who says, well, this happened last year, so now this is going to happen. I never, I, I don't do that. Every year is different. However, remember that Syracuse, granted at the time they had Irv Phillips, granted they had Steve Ishmael, granted they had Paris Bennett and Zaire Franklin and those terrific linebackers. I get it. But last year they were in every single football game. Think about it. If they had done a little bit more at Miami, not just running the football with Dungy in the pouring rain, they probably win the game. The interception early against LSU, if he doesn't throw that, they probably win the game. They threw the uh, game against Florida State in the proverbial dumpster last year as well. They've been in a lot of games under the Dino Babers uh, umbrella, under under the Dino in the Dino Babers era, and I think this year will not be any. Uh, I don't think this year will be different. I really don't. I think this year uh, this team has the ability to be in a lot of games. I think Syracuse's recruiting has improved. I think the speed has improved. I think the athleticism has improved. The clearly the look of the player has improved as well. Um, but I will go Syracuse on Saturday, 38 to 34. Again, won't be surprised one way or the other. Uh, uh, one way or another, how this uh, might turn out, considering the fact that uh, college football is wild and sports are wild as well. But I can't wait. I'll be there uh, rooting on the orange. It should be a heck of a lot of fun. I'm Mike Lindsley. This is Nine Minutes with me on IGTV, YouTube, and Facebook. Hey, we are doing this today from the Phoenix Sports Restaurant. And when I tell you about lunch and dinner, when I tell you about beer on tap in the bottle in the can, when I tell you about awesome specials across the board, you got to get here. They have, Mike and the gang, they have an all-you-can-eat boneless wing special, spaghetti and meatball special, and steak special going on. Um, for the majority of the days during the week, they've got all the big races going on. Every single day, you can come out and eat and have a couple of brews and go over to the Phoenix OTB and place your bets as well. So you got to get to the Phoenix Sports Restaurant. It's a great place to come after work as well. Just kind of hang out, relax, go up and grab a seat at the bar and go uh, check out a couple of the games, a couple of the races, and then go home. So uh, it's a really, really great place to be. Come support the Phoenix Phoenix Sports Restaurant. Their bakery is delicious as well. A bunch of great brownies and cookies, so you got to check that out as well. Nine minutes with Mike Lindsley here from the Phoenix Sports Restaurant. Hit me on Twitter at Mike L Sports, Mike L Sports 1979. On Snapchat and Instagram, you can visit pinstripepassion.com for my Yankees and baseball commentary. Just wrote a new piece on why the Yankees need to trade and part ways with Greg Bird. You can download my podcast, the ML Sports Platter, on iTunes as well. As I always tell you, enjoy the games.